Hey everybody, I'm Dan Herring. Welcome back to my channel, Fish Den 365 This is the video I believe a lot of you have been waiting for. We're going to be talking about stripers, how to catch them in Pennsylvania and areas close by. We're going to do this through the seasons. I'm going to go through some things randomly, but I will do it in an orderly fashion from the point of the seasons that we're fishing. So we're going to start with spring, early spring, when the water is still very cold in the 40s. And so this is before the stripers are moving up or have moved up uh, into uh, shallower water and they're still pretty deep. At this point, you can catch them on the kind of things that you would catch them on in the winter time. And for me, that is two primary baits, a blade bait and a spoon. I might also throw something like this very slowly, or I might even jig this. This is a Kai Tech with a swim jig on it. And I might go heavier so I can get it deeper, just depending on where I'm fishing and, uh, and how deep the fish are. The challenge in this time of the year is to find the fish. When you find them, it's tough to beat blade bait. I tend to catch more numbers with this bait, both hybrids and purebreds, but I tend to catch bigger fish with the spoon, especially bigger hybrids with the spoon. And this is true no matter what area lake I'm fishing. This, this is uh, something that I found to be the case where both hybrids and purebreds are swimming around together or in the same lake. Some of the lakes I fish only have hybrids, like uh, in New Jersey, for example. I don't think there are any purebreds in Spruce Run Reservoir. They're, they're almost all hybrids. But uh, these baits are still what I'm throwing. You know, if I'm fishing up at Paw Pack and you have a good mix, or if I'm fishing at Blue Marsh and there's a decent mix of striper and uh, and hybrid striper, I'm throwing these baits in those circumstances. Now as the water begins to warm up, going up into the 50s, the, the, the fish, both the hybrids and the purebreds, tend to move around. And they'll, they'll tend to move to where there are creek arms and to where there's flowing water. They probably can't spawn, but they may have the urge to move up into these areas because this is what they're meant to do in systems that they can spawn. So you might find them in uh, an arm where there's a major creek running in. And at that time of the year, when that water is, is in the, that 50 degree range, I really like to throw a suspending jerk bait. And I'll fish it like I fish a jerk bait for bass. I'll reel it down and then I'll, and then I'll use the, the jerk, jerk, stop, jerk, pause, type of retrieve and sometimes I'll fish it quite slow I'll do that that uh, once it's down at the uh, the depth that I want it to be at I'll I'll and, and this is dependent on water temperature as well the lower the temperature the longer the pauses will be in between but it tends to be a very good way to catch the stripers then both the hybrids and the purebreds I caught them both this way and if the water is heavily stained I like a bait this color like a bone white sometimes I'll I'll take a marker a black marker and put a black line down the back just to make it look a little more realistic but oftentimes you don't need to do that and I've caught some nice fish on this color at that time of year. A place that I like this color specifically on is Blue Marsh. When you get when it gets that deep greenish stain this color does well there. They, I think they can see it a little easier and, and just in general stripers like white they like chartreuse in, in, in the baits as well. Uh, during that time of year, so you, you can't go too wrong with throwing this. If you have real clear water, then I'll go to a more natural color like uh, like this uh, pointer here, which is Ghost Minnow. Another jerk bait that I like this time of year is the Mega Bass Edo jerk bait. This is a really good uh, jerk bait; it has really great action to it, and it catches fish very well also so that springtime is usually basically the only time I'm thro throwing the jerk baits until fall then in uh, early fall these these come into play again throwing them off of main lake points different spots now because the fish are no longer up those channels so much they're on main lake points more in the fall 
and a jerk bait comes into play again there as well. And I'll fish it the same way at that time of year too. So now let's go back to spring again and make sure we're going in the order that I said we would. I have to have a little water, a little iced tea here because um, I get all hyped up when it comes to striper fishing and, and uh, I get thirsty just talking about it. <laughs> so now we're, we're getting into temperatures rising, right, in spring. And, and so what happens now is we're getting into <clears throat> May and June. And I switch gears completely in May and June in all of the area lakes that I'm fishing. And that's because all of the area lakes that I'm fishing have a bait fish that spawns at night. And I switch over to night fishing in May and June. It's actually two bait fish in some systems. In some, it's just alewives. In others, like Nakamixon, it's alewives. And then a little later, the gizzard shad spawn as well. But the systems that have the alewives, they're, they're Nakamixon, Beltsville, Blue Marsh, Wall and Paul Pack. Spruce Run, uh, and I'm sure that uh, there are other systems as well. Oh, I, I forgot to mention Raystown. I also, there's uh, Hapakong in New Jersey, and there's another lake that's got hybrid stripers uh, up in uh, northern mid, mid county in, in Pennsylvania. I forget the name of the lake and I forget the county, but there's hybrids in there and there's ale, the alewives and the food forage in there as well. This is probably also true in western PA. I haven't gone out there um, in. Uh, Lorraine State Park, there's a lake there called Lake Arthur. I know it used to have hybrids and, and uh, it probably still does. If it does, this would be true there as well. So this night fishing deal is, is uh, changes the game for me because there, it's, it's wrapped all around the alewife spawn and the fish are, are chasing these alewives. And what happens is when these alewives are spawning, they come to the surface, it's usually on main lake points. Uh, they, like, they like water that uh, has flats on it so that they can come in from a long point, for example. And they get up on there and they, they get together and they do this circling ritual on the surface. And they become very vulnerable when they're doing that. And you'll, and you'll hear these stripers blowing up on them. Both the hybrids and the purebreds do this. They'll blow up on these fish. And so you want something that uh, that you know is a top water or a semi top water this time of year you can certainly catch them under the water as well especially on nights where they're not blowing up as much so what do i like then well in the in the early may when the alewives are just getting started doing this i like a wake bait i like a bait that makes a wake and there's two primary baits that i'll throw one is a red fin a Cordell Redfin or a Ripplin Redfin, which is smaller. I take the middle hook off the Ripplin Redfin because it's a smaller bait, but it, it makes a wake on the surface and that's the whole point of that bait. Another one that I like, and somebody reminded me of this recently in, when they, when they uh, commented on one of my videos, is a Bomber Long A. This one has uh, a really cool reflective scale finish inside the bait. And you can throw this bait out there and wake this as well. You just have to fish it very slow. It's a little more subtler action than the red fin, and sometimes that's better, especially on still nights. This is also a very good walleye catcher, but uh, I like this Bomber Long A as well, and I caught fish on it just this past spring, especially early. Now, as the, uh, as the spring progresses and that spawn progresses, I find that when the fish first come in, when the stripers first come in, these wake baits still do well but then as the night goes on it gets harder and harder to catch them on these because the fish are more focusing in on the the uh, this dance that the alewives do and so that's when I'll go to top waters a Zara spook a lucky craft Sammy these are these are two good baits if I'm at Lake Wall and Paw Pack, those, those work well. But the bait that works the best at Paw Pack for me, bar, I mean, this just, it just kills them. It's hard to get. This is called a Norman Top Dollar. It, it just matches the size of the bait fish very well. And it has the same profile, a very narrow back. So it's a very easy way to catch the stripers at night at Lake Wall and Paw Pack. There's a bait that's come close, especially when, when there's a, a wake on the water or some ripples on the water from wind. And this one I just started fishing with 
more this year and I've caught quite a few on it. It's the Strike King Sexy Dog. I've, I've done very well with this bait this year as well, especially when there's just a little bit more of a chop or ripple on the water. It, gives a, it just makes a little bit more commotion and noise than the, than the top dollar. But boy, on those still nights, it's really hard to beat this bait when you're imitating that alewife spawn. And I've used these baits, you know, at other places too. At Nakamixon, I've caught a lot of stripers on the red fin. Uh, I haven't had the opportunity to fish the uh, the the, uh, the Norman Top Dollar down there, and it's just timing. I haven't been down there, but I'm curious to see if they'll hit this as well as they do in the other systems because the alewives are bigger in Nakamixon, quite a bit bigger, to the point where sometimes they're twice the size of this thing. I don't know if it would matter or not. That's an experiment I have to do one day, uh, maybe next year, because we're sitting in late June now and it's probably too late to find out, unless I was to go down there tonight, which I can't do. But this bait works very well at all of those other lakes that have smaller alewives, Wall and Paul Pack, Beltsville, Spruce Run, Blue Marsh, Raystown, really good bait here. So that takes care of May and June. You know, those, those baits are good all through May and, and most of June. Uh, when the water starts getting warmer and warmer into the 70s, that, that uh, mid-70s and higher, that, that alewife spawn begins to shut down or slow down. It, it, co it goes through, if you're up at Paul Pack, it can go into the second week of July even. But, uh, you know, it starts to slow down. It gets a little tougher to catch the fish. And once summer comes, I, I don't focus on striper fishing so much. I, I change tactics. I go, to, I go for largemouth and smallmouth bass more then. Uh, because when, if you're catching big stripers in that warmer water, it stresses the heck out of them. And if you like to release them like I do, you're probably not going to be able to release them without them dying. So if you want a few for the table, well then in summertime you can, you can certainly catch them. You know, if I was fishing for them at that time of year, I would probably throw a larger bait, a 4.8, maybe uh, swing impact, Kitek swing impact on a jig head, a three quarter ounce jig head like this. Something that would give me a fast fall and would allow me to fish deeper water with that, with that bait. But I don't have to wait long for when the water cools down. In September, I, I start thinking about stripers again and October for sure and November absolutely so you know in September in Wall and Paul Pack you know the stripers are moving around that you know at Beltsville too that this is a time of the year when they in mid-September when they start pushing bait and it's a different bite than that night bite it, it's when they'll push a group of, of uh, alewives into a small area and then they'll just bust on them and and they'll do it you know at night in the spring this is spread out but in the fall, when they come up into what we call the jumps, they're hoarding, hoarding the bait fish together and they'll just bust into them. And sometimes you'll see bait fish flying out of the water, four or five feet out of the water, uh, because these stripers are busting into them and, and uh, smashing them. And when you find that, that's a lot of fun. That happens at Beltsville in September, mid-September especially. And if you can find it, it could be a fun way to fish. It happens at Paw Pack. It even happens at Nakamixon at that time of year, sometimes as well. Great, great way to fish if you can find them. You just kind of have to, you know, be on the lookout. Use your your skills of observation, and if you see something on the surface busting, you just got to quietly get over there and then throw these type of baits. You can use top waters, uh, jerk baits. All of these things tend to work then when those fish are busting because they're they, they get all excited and they're they're just smashing bait at that point, and they're you know they're there to feed. So as the, and this is true, this goes through October as well. And then again in November, when the water starts cooling down, that's when I'll start going back to, you know, I'll still use these suspending jerk baits. As the water cools down, I'm still throwing the Kitex. As it gets, you know, cool, colder and colder into, into late November and into December, I start going back to these again. You know, I'll find these schools of fish and I'm using blade baits, and you can go right into January and catch them, you know, this time, of, that time of year, cold water, right down into the, you know, low 40s, high 30s. It gets a little harder to catch the hybrids when the water gets into the 30s, high 30s. You can still catch the purebreds, though. 
uh, is what I found. And, and so again, blade baits and spoons come into play uh, that time of year. You just have to find the fish. And oftentimes they might be on the sides of points or they're relating out there in deeper water. You, you know, I use my electronics to find them. Oftentimes they're in small packs, small schools. This is true for both hybrids and purebreds. You'll see them, you know, four or five fish arches on top of one another. And then you might go a little ways and see another five, six, seven, eight fish uh, arched out like that on your, on your graph. And they, they make a bigger signal than bass and smallmouth bass, largemouth and smallmouth bass. So I can generally tell when they're stripers. And if I see those, then I'll just, uh, I'll drop what I'm doing and, and, you know, fish the blades, fish the spoons and uh, throw these as well. The, the Kitex, two ways I like to fish this. One is just to jig it like I would a uh, blade bait and spoon up and down, but I could also throw these out and then see if I can let it go down to the depth that those fish are at and then just slowly reel it back. That works well too. Both techniques work with the Kitex, jigging them up and down and using that slow retrieve. And, and again, these, these techniques work on all these different lakes because you know, this is, this is how stripers are in Pennsylvania and, and uh, the surrounding areas. It be, and it's basically because they're relating to the bait fish that we talked about, right? Alewives and in some systems, gizzard shad. One thing I will mention in, uh, in the fall and winter that I've noticed is sometimes I'll find the bait and it'll be tons of bait, very heavily packed. This is especially true at Nakamixon and especially true at, uh, at Blue Marsh. And I suspect it's true at Wall and Paul Pack, but I'm not there as much in, in December and, and later in the, in the fall. But what I'll find is I'll find a lot of bait, and the stripers won't necessarily be in with them, but they won't be far from it either. They, they might be in an adjacent area uh, where I don't see so much bait, but I see the stripers. They're never too far from the bait. But oftentimes they're not in with the bait that time of year. And so if you see the bait, you might think, oh, I'm, I'm going to find the fish. Maybe. But oftentimes you have to continue to look and you'll see the bigger arches sometimes away from the bait. But, uh, but you'll see the stripers that way and, and you can catch them. They're catchable. You just have to throw these baits that we mentioned. So I hope this helps. I hope, uh, I hope you try these different things this year. If you found this video helpful, give me hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We'll be making more and more videos about this kind of stuff as, as the months progress. And, you know, we're certified, bassified, and as always, may God bless your fishing endeavors.